After a lot of quiet time in my desert hideaway, I thought it was time to get back to civilization and seek out some social entertainment. This is the tale of two little communities in the Midwest states, namely Deadwood, South Dakota and Bayard, Nebraska. Although very different in culture, they both have three things in common. One, they both share roughly the same longitude. Two, they are both equally close to my stop near Casper, Wyoming. And three, they both like to party once a year. My first destination was Nebraska. And with its state sign promising the good life, it seems I could do no wrong. The more I drove into the state, the less I could see, as my windshield filled up with the remains of little critters just out for a stroll. Not all roadkill is a prairie dog pancake on the pavement, as it seems most of mine became grill ornaments. Fortunately, there were no dead kittens, but what remained was strangely fascinating in its own way. Equally intriguing was this colorful tractor graveyard, which reminded me of the two modes of locomotion plenty on the prairie, tractors and trains. The railroad's most prominent cargo on the other side of the tracks, Bayard, Nebraska. The train whistle echoes down a main street that a thousand people call home. A little subdued most of the time, but in early September the streets come alive for the one big annual event, Pioneer Days. It's Parade Day at Bayard, Nebraska. And what's a parade without fire trucks? Shriners? A senator driving a tractor? the local truck dealer, an important looking guy waving enthusiastically, and cheerleaders from the local football team. Representing law and order was the sheriff's posse. But it wasn't just pioneer spirit as the new technology pulled up including the local android and the ever-intrusive drone. But the one big attraction in this parade was this float. No, it isn't a wedding cake gone wrong or any part of the anatomy, but the one thing that really put Bayard on the map, its local landmark. Chimney Rock is a geological rock formation just south of Bayard. Historically important as a guidepost for pioneers in the early Oregon Trail. But it's also a national historic site with its own visitor center. The locals are so proud of this natural phenomena, they did one more thing to make sure you couldn't miss it. They lit it up at night. A beacon that is seen for miles around. But my photographic instinct sensed that there was more to this than what the passerby saw from the road. I needed to hike a weeded trail at night to the dark side of the pinnacle. And this is what I found.
As magical as it was, I still needed an early start for the next day, so headed back to Bayard for the rest of the night. A few weeks later, it was time for a second little get-together in the Black Hills of South Dakota. This is Deadwood. Well, not your average little rural town, as the hills always seem to have some kind of effect on people. Those who enter Deadwood for the first time will quickly sense something's a little different here. Something a little daring, a little reckless, little untamed. I've seen quite a few Wild West towns in my travels, but most close down when the tour buses leave. Deadwood, however, keeps going well after sundown. A little rugged, a little eccentric, and a great place to unwind, and certainly the perfect place for a party. I'm in Deadwood, South Dakota for the Oktoberfest, the beer, and the wiener dog race. Prost! My name is Con Stapleton and I'm the first and only town marshal at Deadwood. And it is my solemn duty to swear all of you in as official Oktoberfest party goers. Now what I need everybody to do is to raise your right hand. Your other right hand. And repeat after me, nice and loud, so as I can hear you. Everybody together, all right? Repeat after me, I. I. State your name. <laughs> I should have expected no less. <laughs> Promise to obey. Promise to obey. There are several competitive events at an Oktoberfest, and one of the most popular is the beer barrel race. One member has to roll an empty keg of beer through an obstacle course, hammer a few nails in a log before the other team member can roll it back. It seems easy, but it's not.
Besides beer, there's nothing more German than a little dog that looks like a sausage. Some call them wiener dogs, some say dash hounds, but the real Germans probably prefer Dachshund. Whatever you call them, you can't get around their undeniable cuteness. So it's no surprise that when they get together to race, people come in swarms to watch. All weekend long, we've got all kinds of things going on. But this event right here, I can honestly say, is my favorite. Because we highlight some fun little four-legged friends, which is great. So we're going to start off with our costume contest. And the first one up is Dottie. And today she's a pretty monarch butterfly. What a title. That's the in the West. One thing I'd like to point out, even though we have dead ones finest here, this is the only day on Main Street you can legally play with a wiener. And not get in trouble. <laughs> The little stagecoach driver is named Haley. She knows this. I know what to do here. And Lucy is a banana split. And then let's find us along with our reenactors. We'll decide. Let's start with Dottie. What do you guys think about Dottie? Give me some noise. Some applause. And then up and down the split, Lucy. What do you think about Lucy? What do you think about our stage coach? Hey, everybody. Right, uh, our winner. Second place goes to our banana split. Yeah. And Lucy. And first place. To the old girl, even though she runs like she's six, still in the You ready for racing? Yeah! Alright. Listen for the whistle, dogs ready? Final race, it's Anthony on the left and Flynn on the right. It's important to note that the race is won by the first dog that reaches its owner, not the fastest. <laughs> All right, off for a pause behind the line. Wait for the whistle. Uh -oh, uh -oh. Round of applause 
Andrew Booth, our finalist, everybody. So there you have it, folks. The fastest wiener in the West is Flynn from Rapid City, South Dakota. But with the race over, it was time for me to move on. Whether you preferred the subtle hominess of Bayard or the wild wiener races of Deadwood, my sincere wish is that I've inspired you to visit some of these cute little hideaways that dot the American Midwest. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and follow me on my other travels as well.